So the props that I have nearby are the usual um, yoga blocks, a strap, a blanket. And it might be that where you're at, there's no AC, so um, might be pretty toasty. So just take it easy, listen to your body. Give it another minute for anybody else to arrive. Make yourself comfortable. Perhaps resting with the eyes closed. Letting the body arrive on the mat. And like a well-worn path through a field of woods, you might find yourself just automatically sliding into a closed mouth style of breath. So as we get ourselves situated and settled, make any little adjustments, perhaps finding a comfortable seat, letting the eyes rest. We may take a deep inhale through the nose and exhale, sigh out. Please feel free to repeat that. Perhaps we're exploring the closed mouth style of breath. We may give the body a very subtle, gentle rocking motion, letting it be one that is instinctive or intuitive to you. And consider letting the chin dip towards the chest. We might take our fingers to the back of the neck and start to draw some gentle circles or just move the fingers a little bit side to side palpating as we lift the crown of the head back up towards the ceiling. So oftentimes our rest position, our looking at the bone position is kind of a jutting head forward. So let's take a moment and think about ramping that back of the head, the backs of the ears, both up and backwards and letting the crown of the head rise. There's a lengthening of the neck Shoulders are gently back and down. Full breath. Let's raise the left hand and I'm mirroring. Start to find some movement through the wrist. Go the other way and let the fingers mobilize. And then let the elbow circle, like maybe you're clearing the steam from a mirror, the fog from a mirror, go the other way, letting that elbow mobilize. Let's bend the elbow out to the side and glide it over to the right. Chin may turn to the right. The head may tilt or lean towards the left shoulder or upper arm. Full breath. We're very gently rebounding back to center. Maybe we give the arm a little wobble, a little rock. We might find some juicier, larger circles with the shoulder. Go the other way. Still breathing and releasing. So we'll raise that right hand, finding some finger mobilizations, some wrist rotations, and then we'll clean, clean the steam, clear the steam from the mirror, go the other way so we're mobilizing that elbow. And then let the elbow move out to the right, glide the arm over to the left, chin, Moving towards the left, chin may tuck. And very gently moving back to center. Let that shoulder roll. It does not matter which direction you started in the rolls. Go the other way, circle, second direction. 
And releasing back to center. Maybe we give the ribs a little shift side to side. Palms spin the face forward. Inhale, circle the arms high. And as we exhale, rotating, twisting over towards the right. Consider reaching the right arm up in the air as we hold on to the left knee, finding a diagonal lean towards the left. So more out and over the knee than out and over the hip. Let's come all the way back up to center. Let that arm release down. We'll spin both palms to face forward, circle the arms high. And as we exhale, twisting second side. So this may be your left side. Full breath. We may be bending that left elbow, reaching the left arm up, and finding that diagonal lean beyond the right knee. Maybe we keep up with some finger mobilizations. Let's bring it back up through center, release the hand down, and just notice which foot or leg you have on top. Kind of like we have a preference with the thumb cross, we usually do with our legs too. So we may lean back and just extend the leg that you have on top, reach that leg out. The heel can land and we'll slide back a little further so the foot stays in the frame, pointing and flexing, pointing and flexing. Let that ankle explore a few circles. Go the other one. So with the heel down, toe tips pointing up. And I'm gonna talk with my hand too, just in case it's easier to see what's happening. The hand movement will be larger than the foot movement. We're turning the sole of the foot in. We're not holding it, it might cause a foot cramp. And then little toe side of the foot is trying to draw back towards that outer hip and you don't have to hold it that long. It's more of just a back and forth. So it's an inversion of the foot and an eversion of the foot. So we're just going back and forth with that ankle. There may not be a lot of movement. Summertime, maybe doing a little more hiking. This is a good exercise for those ankles to help us uh, maybe prevent an ankle twist. And then let's pause with that. And we're gonna think about the big toe ball mound. It may or may not move. We're gonna ask the big toe, big toe ball mound to move forward of the other four digits. We're moving those digits back. And again, we're not holding it long. I'm long-winded here. Press the other four toes forward and the big toe moves back. So it's just a back and forth motion. And it might be that nothing is happening yet. And it can be retrained if it's not happening right now. You might even bend your knee and use your hands to make that motion happen. And then if we bend our knee, in fact, let's just go ahead and do that. Grab the toes and just give the toes a little self-massage. Run your fingers over the nails, the undersides, and definitely fan those toes. Take them wide. Now let's recross with our second leg on top or in front. And give yourself a moment to find the seat that will work for you for now. Coming back to the breath. Consider our both palms forward, arms rising overhead, weaving fingers together, and just note which thumb you like on top. Press up through the palms of the hands, and we may bend one elbow, reaching up to the heel of the other hand a little more, and take it the other way. And we might just go back and forth, and we might be noticing a difference side to side. Now, maybe we feel a little tighter, a little more, a little more or less sensation on one side. Just make a note which side that might be for yourself. Hands come to the back of the head, thumbs pointing down the neck, tipping, leaning back. There's a support of the head. There's a gentle lengthening or tractioning of the neck. The elbows could be falling open, but they don't have to be. Let's very gently return to center, let the arms come down. Full breath, give ourselves a moment. Maybe we roll those shoulders again, kind of like a palate cleanser or like we're clearing out the edge of sketch. We'll take that second leg, reach out, extend, let the foot land, 
pointing, flexing, pointing, flexing, ankle rotations, go the other way, circling, second direction, full breath, soft jaw, and then we'll pause with that, and we'll think about that big toe moving forward, and then the other four digits forward. So we're just swapping back and forth, back and forth, and of course, bend the knee, and help it along if it just wasn't happening. Do a little toe massage, move up the toes, fan the toes. And let's cross the ankles, roll ourselves up into a standing forward fold. Unwind the legs. Now, one of the things you might be noticing if you are not in AC is that you feel a lot more flexible in the heat. And maybe not, but some of us, that will be the case. Just make sure we're not overdoing it. So we might give the hips a little shift side to side. Maybe a little circle, circle, nod of the hand. And if you're not at the top short edge of the mat, let's shift around to that short edge of the mat and consider planting the hands and perhaps we walk it back into a down face dog. And we might be pedaling out through the heels, shifting through the hips, articulating through the feet. Consider dropping down onto the knees. And if the wrists are already feeling that, feel free to give yourself a little self massage with each wrist. And we might find some padding for the knees. We might also position ourselves so that you can extend your leg fully and have your foot touch the wall, flat foot touch the wall. It's a possibility. So we'll bring our palms back down to the ground. And one way to help strengthen the wrist is to really start to put your fingerprints down on the floor, all of them. So make sure the thumb gets down there too. It likes to be the knotty knuckle that kind of pops up. And there's a little hollow at the center of the palm. So kind of like suction cup hands. Widen the knees and let the ribs dip towards the ground. So we're moving into that cow pose, that sway back position. And then go the other way. Chin towards chest, back is rounding. Releasing down, the sternum and the chin may rise. And as we exhale, rounding. From that cat pose, we might start to drop the hips back. Maybe we adjust the hands in. You're welcome to keep the arms fully extended. You might prefer to bend the elbows. Ideally, we're not crimping the neck. The head could rest on the floor. It could rest on a prop so that we have a more neutral neck. And then as we breathe, if you're in a wide knee position, consider drawing the knees together, rising part way up and walking the hands over to the right. So side bending child's pose, we might be moving that brow support, neck support over to the right. Elbows bent or arms extended, we might lean the left ribs a little more left. Let's come back to center. We might be moving the prop to the second side with the ribs up and over the thigh, finding that side bend, that lean to the second side. Perhaps right ribs widening, leaning a little more to the right. And let's bring it back to center. As we find our way up, Let's tuck the right toes and pitch back through that right heel. So we're not necessarily trying to put the heel on the floor. That might happen for some of us. We're pitching back, leaning back, lengthening the lower leg. Chin may tuck into the chest. A releasing and second side. So we'll tuck the left toes. We'll tip back through the heel. A little bit of rounding in the back. 
chin, tucking into chest, maybe even a little nod or circle nod of the head as we stretch into the neck. Let's release back down. Now, another option to get off the wrist, you might decide to come onto your knuckles. You might put a folded blanket under the heels of your hand, creating a wedge, a little elevation. And let's reach that right leg back and start to elevate the leg. Now, oftentimes we'll lift the leg really high and I'm exaggerating it, but we tend to dip down into cow when that happens. Try to come back up to a straight back position. Point the toes down. Dial, and I'm exaggerating this too, dial the big toe in towards midline. Now, this might be a place where if you're close enough to a wall, you use a wall. You might literally press that right foot into the wall, keep the ribs elevated. We can keep the left hand down, or maybe we bend the elbow and reach that left arm forward. You could use a wall there too, if there's one that's easy for you to press that hand into. But again, just check the back if we sunk down, try to lift back up, find that muscular engagement. Let's drop it down and we'll try that on the second side. The crown of your head, I know I'm looking at the device, the crown of your head is actually forward. So we'll try not to crane our hand into the camera there or the screen. We'll take the foot back, lift the ribs, let the leg rise. Now, another thing that happens is sometimes the hip, the leg rolls up. So we're trying to keep that left hip, the up hip, level with the down hip. Press the foot into a real or imaginary wall, maybe the right elbow bends, and that right arm may extend. Listen to your body, find the breath, and when you're ready, release it. Let's come down off of the hands completely. So possibly we sit back on the heels. We might widen the feet, Elevate ourselves, put a block or some pillows, blanket, anything underneath yourself. That's needed. So we might go for a retraction, the self massage of the wrists. We might bring the backs of the hands onto side ribs. My favorite doesn't have to be yours. Backs of the hands on the thighs. Maybe a little finger movement. Come on up. I'm just going to around to face the camera so you can see what I'm doing with my hands a little easier here. Let's take one hand, doesn't matter which. Press the hand forward, point the fingers down, cluster, bring the fingers back in. Reach it forward, flex, cluster, bring it in. Now we might reach it forward, grab those fingers with the opposite hand and hold. And as I mentioned, I kind of like putting my hand out on my thigh. This might not work for everyone. It's going to vary based on arm length, torso length, flexibility. So instead of holding with fingers, maybe you're pinning your fingers down on that same side thigh and just release, let it go. Second side, maybe you started with your dominant hand. It's usually more intense with the dominant side. So just take it slowly. The side might feel super different. Maybe we're not holding, maybe we're gonna capture the fingers, reach it out, and maybe we just visit for a second. Maybe we go for a longer hold with our hand or dropping the hand down onto the lap. Again, just a possibility. Finding fullness of breath, whichever variation you prefer, we'll let that go. Circle it out. Now, likely you're facing the shortage in the mat, we're gonna spin back around there and join you. So from our kneeling seat, let's rise up. Now, if you've got a block between your knees, you might need to just kind of move it out of the way there. Hopefully you've got a little padding for your shins, your knees. We might play with a little weight shift, side to side. Now, as we shift to the left, if you've got a wall, you could use it. If you've got some kind of stick or staff, you could use it to help with balance. Or we're just going to start to contract, shorten the distance between that right arm hit, right hip. We're hiking the hip up and we're letting the balance wobble. We're challenging the balance. So maybe something's got to catch us. Maybe we drop down and try it again. You might fix your gaze forward, start to lift that leg, bring it up in the air, hang out here like it's fun. Maybe there's a little movement, voluntary or involuntary. We might be playing toe hot potato and eventually land that foot forward. Let the hands drop down. We might be saying, ooh, hello, left hip flexors. 
maybe quadriceps, maybe all of that. And if you're not feeling that yet, consider leaning the torso back a little more and letting your pelvis maybe move a little further forward. Ooh, back it off if we don't really need to turn it up that much just yet. Back leg arm, left arm may rise. Now that might be plenty. Feel free to bring movement into the fingers. We might reach up, grab that left forearm or wrist with the right hand and give it a little boost. We may tuck the ribs back like a kitten pose and find a side bending cat. So you get a little rounding in the back. There's a moderate rotation to the right and we're reaching the heel of that left hand kind of diagonally out, sort of beyond the right knee. And let's rise back up and consider, you can keep your hands up in the air, you don't have to, you could bring them down. We might tap that right foot, we might step it back and we'll practice coming up to stand. So we might need to lean really far forward in order to come to stand. We might be able to just press down and rise up, see what happens. There might be a little fidgeting. We might be playing hot potato with that back foot. Let's try bringing it right back down. Slowly, carefully with control. We'll peel that right foot up and we'll reverse the action. So you could float that right foot. You could play a little game of Hot potato with the toes, gradually working that leg back, point the foot, sitting back. Maybe you want to know where that block is. Maybe you want to grab the block, plug it back into place between the feet. Sitting with the breath. So before we come to the other side, let's take this opportunity to practice a cooling breath technique. You can use this in your yoga practice. You can use this anywhere. Full breath. And now you might be able to extend your tongue and roll it like a taco shop. You might not. That's okay. If that's the case, you're going to stick your tongue out. You're not on the camera, just me. And you'll make an O shape with your lips. So once you've extended the tongue, you'll inhale over or through the tongue. Retract the tongue, lips softly together, and we're exhaling through the nose. So I'll demonstrate. When you feel like you've got it, just let the eyes rest, and you might just tick off your rounds of breath on a hand, on your fingers. Try to try at least three out at your own pace, your own rhythm, extending the tongue, Retract it, exhale through the nose, and repeating. This is called, in Sanskrit, the name for this breath is Shatali Pranayam. So you can stick with it, you can return to a closed mouth style of breath, feel free to revisit it at any point in our practice. So again, we might want to just move that uh, sitting block from between our heels. We'll rise up and we're shifting that weight this time to the right side. We're hiking that left hip up and we're flirting with balancing on that one leg. And if you're really speedy about putting that foot down, consider backing it off and trying again. The balance may differ side to side or depending on the height you lift the hip up to. So we'll find our spot. See what's going on with that right leg. Maybe we're leaning back a little more. Maybe we're raising right arm up. And that can be ample. We might spin right palm to face the right and circle forearm or wrist. Look for that length. Tuck the ribs back. And find that side bending cat with a little rotation. And we'll slowly come all the way back up to center. And again, you can choose to keep the arms overhead. Maybe if balance is feeling a little more precarious, we bring our hands down. We might step that left heel back, shift it forward, with or without a lot of weight. So pressing down, see what happens. We might revisit it immediately. 
we might come right back up, stay light on the right toes, and then slowly, slowly bring it back down. So perhaps pointing the back foot, making it backwards. Maybe we're lifting the leg and playing with that balance. Maybe we're playing that hot potato, tap it out to the left game. Bring the foot down, sitting on back. So give yourself a moment, the temperature may have risen, especially if you're not in an AC space. So let's slide on forward, bringing the tops of the feet onto cushion if they are not. Now we might walk our hands behind the back and we may lift one shin, one knee up and off the ground. And we might even find a little waggle of that shin. Drop it down, second side, let the leg rise. There might be a little waggle. Some of us might be happy with lifting both shins at the same time, shifting side to side. Let's release shins down. Adjust the knees back so they have the cushion. Weight to the left. The arms may rise. The right leg may rise. Stepping right foot forward between the hands. Let's look for a twist over to the right. We might tuck the back toes, lift that back knee up. Maybe we start to take that twist a little bit lower. Left forearm, elbow, maybe on the right leg. Pressing back through back heel if the knee is rising. We'll bring it back to center. Tap stepping or just stepping. Back foot forward, shift it out. So the leg we had forward, right leg. Let's bring that foot back, bend the knee, Hug the foot in, rolling the head of the shoulder back, option to hold the foot with both hands, elbows rolling back, shoulders rolling back, round the head high. Option, if you've got room where you're standing, I'm gonna back it up a little bit so that you do have room. You might reach left arm up in the air, and we might start to consider a dancer's pose. It does not have to be that deep. So one of the Things I would recommend with your dancer's pose. If you're starting to explore the back bend, let's make sure it is a back bend. I see a lot of this where we're hugging the heel in and we lean forward, completely omitting the back bend. So if you're going to go for the back bend, try to point that floating knee, right knee down to the ground first. Then open the heel up away from the butt cheek. So there's a little curvature in the back. Doesn't matter how far forward you go, really. We'll come back up. Release, shift it out, spin palms forward. So if you're in the middle of that will guide you, maybe step a little further forward, reach the arms high, and exhale, Uttanasana, forward bend. At your own pace, your own rhythm, Arda, half forward bend, come halfway up, Arda Uttanasana. We'll walk those hands back, find our way back into down face dog. Perhaps pedaling it out, maybe a little nod, circle of the head. We might wiggle the feet further back. And rock on forward towards a high plank, sussing back into those toes. We can land one knee at a time. We can land both knees. We'll slide on down to the belly. Bring those elbows under the shoulders. Let the heart rise. Maybe there's a little shift, drift side to side. Full breath. Maybe you had a lot of ice cream to keep cool today. So I'm just checking how that belly's feeling on the ground there. And we'll roll on down. At your own pace, heart rising, cobra. It could become up dog. It doesn't have to. Moving hips back towards heels. Let's slide the hands back and we may want to plug our knee padding back into place. So we've got hips over knees. Weight will shift to the right so that we can bring that left leg forward. Bring it up, challenge the balance for as long as it's going to be fun for you. Let that left foot land. So we'll think about a twist here. The arms may rise, twisting, high twisting over to the left. We can stick with this variation. We might shift a little further forward in order to tuck the back toes and lift that back knee. We might need to wiggle the foot further back. We might decide to bring right forearm or elbow onto the left thigh. Let's 
and we'll gradually unwind. We're thinking about coming up to stand. So maybe there's a few tap steps to bring that foot in. Maybe it's just one big step. Bring that right foot forward. Feel free to shift it out. I'm going to spin around. Don't feel like you have to do that. And again, you could use the wall. We'll slide that second foot back, like with your left foot. And we'll hold on to the foot with one or both hands. And maybe we're trying out that cooling breath. Maybe we're raising that right arm. Maybe we're pressing the heel away from the glute. And we'll gradually bring it back to center. Shift out anything that needs it. And we'll find our way back up to that top short edge of the mat. Put a little bend in the knees. Maybe feet are connected, knees connected. The arms may rise. Thumbs to brow, thumbs to heart. Let's stand back up and step out wide stance so our toes are facing the long edge of the mat. I'm going to mirror in this direction. So right foot pivots towards the short edge of the mat. Now, depending on the type of mat you have, when it's hot, right, our mat starts to become a little more like a slip and slide. So just be mindful of that. You might want to start shorter because maybe those feet are going to slide out. We're bending, we're lunging into that front knee. We may be heel towing that back leg a little further back or in. The arms open out to a T, chin moving over to the right, bent knee side, left palm faces up and moves to the right. Right palm faces down, fingertips move to the left, and it's like we're moving the arms in opposite directions where we are. And let's rise back up, extend the leg, and if your feet are slipping a lot, maybe heel for them in a bit. Find that bend in the front knee, tip down, start to find your triangle. Consider using a block, extending front leg, engaging the arch, but soften the toes. We may reach top arm up in the air for our triangle. We may arc those top ribs up. Now let's consider putting some bend back in that top knee, top hand to the hip. Now, maybe we lengthen our stance. Maybe we heel toe that back leg a little bit further back and drop our block a little lower and revisit extending that right leg. So mindful of your elbow, your wrist, your shoulder. We're working towards a little more load bearing in the wrist and the arm, but we don't have to take it any further, but we might. So we might rebound that knee. We might spin our block down to its lowest possible setting if we're not yet there and re-extend. Now, maybe we get rid of the block, put our hand on the ground and start to heel toe, heel toe that right foot over towards the long edge of that mat and maybe even off the mat. You can keep the foot down. You could also play with lifting that leg up. And that top arm could reach up, it could stay down. You might decide to grab the toes if they're up and reach that leg forward, just a possibility. Now consider bending that knee, landing the shin on the ground, pivoting the back heel up in the air. So this is where the mirroring might get a little confusing. So this is your right leg that should be forward. And we might be wiggling that foot back, maybe pointing the foot, Maybe we decide we prefer a pinwheel position. Bend your left knee out to the left. You're welcome to take it down lower. We might angle down. We might support the brow. So please know, as with any pose, if you find yourself in a spot that is just really serving what your body needs in this moment, you're always welcome to stay with We might be leaning over to the right, bringing that left knee up, 
So we're finding that pinwheel position for a moment. We might find a couple of blocks. That's optional. We might place the left foot in front of the right foot. And perhaps we tap the foot. So we could use the blocks. We can press down into the floor to help us rise up. We might be going hands-free. So we might tap down into that left foot and perhaps we kind of shift forward onto the right shin. This is taking it very slowly. We may sit back. We might move that left foot maybe a little further forward, a little further back. So you're experimenting. You're going to see what might work for you. So we might press down and start to rise up and we're finding ourselves kind of back in that lunge position possibly. But maybe we take it a little quicker. Maybe we press down and rise back up to stand. Now again, you could absolutely use, absolutely use blocks or a couple of staffs. By staffs, I mean maybe you've got a swifter handle, a broom handle, a couple of sticks nearby. So once we're back at standing, let's step back out wide stance. Now, where do we leave our props? Maybe we want to just take a moment and put something down near that other short edge of the mat, and it would be the left toes. It should be your second side. And we're bending into that front knee. Maybe there's a little bend extend. Maybe the feet are sliding and we want to heel toe them in. We'll open up, find that warrior two. Chin to the left. Find the breath. And perhaps we sweep the right palm face up over towards bending knee. Taking left arm over to the right moving those hands apart, those arms apart, reminding ourselves not only to bend in the left knee, but it likes to roll inwards, so roll it back out to the left. And at your own pace, we'll rise back up, extend the leg, and if the feet are really sliding like mine are there, go ahead and heel toe them in a bit. Put a little bend in your knees, start to find your way down into that triangle position. So we might be extending left leg, Maybe our block starts on the tallest setting. The ribs may rise, the arm may rise. Check in with the neck. And perhaps we bring that top hand down, bend the knee and heel toe, or let that back leg slide a little further back, and we might drop our block a level lower. And perhaps we re extend. You can back it off. We might bend the knee, take the block to its lowest setting, re-extend. And again, you can stick with any of these or back it off. We might bend the knee. And we may be bringing that hand down to the ground as we start to heel toe the foot over to the long edge of the mat that is easiest to heel toe it to. So we just keep heel toeing, heel toeing. That leg could even stay straight. Foot can absolutely stay on the ground. The arm may rise. Or perhaps we slide that foot in, bending the knee. We might use a strap or our hand to hold on to the foot and extend the leg. These are just possibilities. We might be bending that knee. We might be placing both hands down, landing on that left foot. And we're back out of the, uh, the sun spot there. So we might be pointing back foot or pinwheel position, bring the knee out to the side. Feel free to add in forward bend if that's working for you right now. And you may support the brow. And again, you can stick with this a while longer if you like. We might start to tip over to the left so that we can bend that right knee, finding our way into that pinwheel shape. Get the blocks nearby if you like to use them for your hands. And we'll step the right foot in front of the left heel. Let the body breathe. We may give the foot a little tap, hands down, hands up. We might explore rising up and oops, my heel was too close to the foot. That's not gonna work. Gotta come back down, play with it. See where the positioning will work for you to rise up. Maybe you wanna step it a little further forward so we're in the lunge for a moment. Maybe you're ready to press down and rise all the way up to stand. 
shifting it out. So let's come back to a short edgy note, focusing on right foot forward, left leg back. Let's bend that front knee, raise the back leg arm. So that's probably your left arm. Twisting, pivoting towards the right. So the hand or forearm could come to the thigh. We might find a block. Put our hand on the brick, maybe the floor, extending that front leg closer to straight. And the top arm may rise. So it's a twisted triangle. Reaching back through that right hip, fanning toes. Don't worry, no arm balance here. We'll bend back into the knee and we'll just reverse it. We'll bring the hand to the hip, both hands to the hips. So we'll rise up to stand, navigating left foot forward, right foot back. So we'll bend into that front knee, wiggle that back leg back as needed. Right arm may rise. Find that twist, that rotation to the left. Find your forward fold. Extending left leg as much as feels appropriate on this side. Maybe left arm reaching high. And let's bring that top hand back down, rebending into front knee. Hands on hips, we'll rise back up to stand, right foot forward. So let's add back in our knee squat, so that chair sit, and the arms may circle high, thumbs to the brow, thumbs to the heart, heart may rise, start to create a little twist over to the right. Maybe we sink down a little deeper, just flirt with the idea of it. We'll come back up, extend the legs, relief. But we'll come back in for the second side. Let the heart rise. Find that rotation. We might squat a little lower and rise back up. Thumbs to brow, thumbs to heart, right foot forward, left leg back. Wiggle it back. Grab your blanket for knee padding if you like. Back knee down. Lean on back. Invite that left forearm back onto the right thigh. Maybe. Left elbow, outside right leg, but press the leg back out to the right. Don't let it collapse into the left. Can you still breathe? <laughs> now can I breathe and talk? <laughs> so we're stacking the hands. Maybe the back toes tuck and the back knee rises. There does not have to be any rush with this. You can stay here. You can back it off. We might shift that weight forward and step the left foot alongside the right. We may sink down a little lower. You might possibly want something rolled up underneath the heels. Let the hands come down to the floor off to the side. Just a possibility. You could also build that floor up. Put a couple of blocks there, something firm, preferably. Now, if you decide you want to take this any further, the heels might lift. They may, already hurt. they may already be lifted. You might tuck this right elbow up against your ribs or even to the inside. And we may start to lean that right outer thigh onto the shelf we're creating with our arms. Now let's bring ourselves back to center. Palms to the heart, roll it forward, let the hips rise. We'll give the head a little muscle. Why don't I turn around so I continue to face you instead of the wall? And we'll navigate that right leg back. So there's the sun shot. Let me back it up. So we can have that back knee down. And we can rise up, go for that high twist. We can hang out here. We can sink into that kind of crescent lunge a little deeper. We can stay there. We can work the elbow, the upper arm outside the leg. Press the leg into the arm and vice versa. Back toes may tuck, knee may rise. Pitch back through the heel, find the breath. Make sure you can breathe. Maybe you decide to step the back foot forward, just a possibility. Maybe it's a few steps, maybe it's one step and a deeper squat. It does not have to be a deeper squat. We might. Start to shift our hands onto blocks over to the left or onto the ground. 
might just be fingertips touching down. The heels may rise up so that we can get the arms a little lower. We might be shifting that weight just a bit forward, just a possibility. When you feel ready to unwind, we'll just bring it back to center. Let those hips rise. Perhaps give the head a little nod, a circle nod. And we may flutter the lips, just like a horse does. Deep inhale, it's basically a raspberry. Let the lips slacken, let the eyebrows slide towards the hairline. And let's take our time to begin to rise part way. We'll heel toe those feet in and we'll be coming back down to the knees. So if you want that knee pad, you go ahead and grab it. So we might just be releasing down onto the shins. I'm going to turn sideways to you and you might be grabbing a strap and putting it nearby. So we may want to sit on a block or even two blocks. You can manipulate the height. Let's bring that left foot forward, left foot grounded. Top of the right foot is on the ground. For some of us, maybe not a whole lot going on yet. For others, it might be all about the ankle. Maybe you want to roll up a towel and put it underneath the top of the foot, the ankle, if there's a gap between the top of the foot, the ankle, and the ground. So this could be our spot. We might walk the hands backwards and lift the hips off of our prop. Tuck the tailbone, kind of lifting it upwards. So we should feel a turn up of the stretch in quadriceps and let the glutes come back down, keeping that tuck. So we have that pretty big stretch sensation in the front of the right thigh. Now notice if your right knee is winging out to the right, we're gonna to try to keep that right knee forward of the hip. You might also notice that your knee is rising up off the ground. We're gonna to try to keep the shin down. Now, some of us might prefer a lesser prop under the bottom. Maybe whatever you've got underneath you has another level and you can drop it down. It's a pretty big drop to go from a four inch block all the way down to the ground. So a blanket can be nice. But if you're someone, the quads are feeling pretty open today. Maybe you drop onto the elbows. And if you really want to, you can always come all the way down onto the back and hold opposite elbows overhead. Those are just possibilities. So as you feel ready to come out of it, we might walk the hands back up. We might plug the prop back in, slide right foot forward and navigate the left leg back. As with anything, this side might feel pretty different. If we're taking it further, maybe knuckles back, press into the right foot, hips rise, put the seat back down. Ooh, so maybe this is the tighter side and we hang out here. Maybe you're reducing the height of your prop. Maybe you're coming onto the forearms or even all the way down onto back. And let's gradually bring ourselves back up, untuck the seat, plug your prop back in the kango, and slide that left foot forward. So just give yourself a moment. And when you feel ready, we'll shift on down to the ground, continuing to keep those props within easy reach. Make sure as we come down, that you have room overhead. So if you extend your arms, you're not going to hit anything. Let's find a cactus arm position on the ground. Fan the toes. Widen the ribs. Soften with each exhalation. 
Banding the toes, consider curling the hips up, lifting the hips high, reaching forward with the knees, and then articulating down the back. So it's like you're traction down the back, upper back, mid back, low back. Tilt the tailbone down. Band the toes, release the toes, curl the tailbone up, let the hips rise, reach forward through the knees. And then gradually, slowly roll it back down. So please feel free to stick with that variation. You might be finding robot arms. Press down into the elbows, let the hips rise, fingertips may point towards heels. And gradually rolling, releasing back down. They may find a block. Let the hips rise, plug the block in under the hips and bring the knees over the hips, dust off the feet so we don't bring any floor debris down into our eyes if we lift the legs higher. Now we might do a little rock with the hips, a little self-massage on the block. And then find a spot where we're comfortable for the next 10 to 15 breath cycles with the legs higher than the hips, higher than the heart. Gradually, slowly, slowly, letting the knees rebend. Noticing the sensation, the temperature through the legs, through the feet. Letting the feet eventually touch down. You might heel toe the feet wide, pausing, resting. You may reach down with the hands, locate the block, and adjust the feet just enough that you'll feel comfortable pressing into the feet to slide the block away. Let the hips return to the ground. Now you may want to keep a block handy as we let the knees windshield wiper or tip over to the right. You might want to block underneath either the knee, especially if you've got some sensitivity in the knee. And the arms may open, the chin may lock a little to the right. Let's gently return knees to center. Take it slow, pivoting to that second side. So we're letting the left knee fall to the left. We're letting the right knee chase it or follow. And then with your arms, your shoulders, your neck. Remembering that there's really no hurry. Stay a while longer if you like, 
That right knee may rise. It's moving back towards the right. That left knee is very gradually following. Breathing around the left hip, left side body. We might be moving towards arms overhead. We may be encircling the left wrist, left forearm, and moving the elbows away from one another briefly and softening. The left knee, again, may start to rise and pivot over to the right with that right knee following. We might be swapping our wrist forearm grip. We might heel toe or adjust either foot, either leg as needed. We might be creating that action of moving or pulling the elbows apart as we arch the back. And I soften. Bringing that right knee back up to center. Let the left knee follow. Heel toeing to a place where the feet will be wide, but the knees can tip in and support one another. And then perhaps we step the feet in. Hug the thighs into the chest and give yourself a little rock on the low back or circle the knees. The intent is to massage the low back. Let's land the feet a little to the left, lift the hips, move them a little to the left, find your strap, maybe just place it on your belly in case you want to use it, you might not. Sweep the knees in and let the knees now fall to the right. So one knee stacked on top of the other. And we can stick with this. We might reach down with our hands and grab the toes. We might use the strap, put it around the feet, and we may be extending our legs out to the right. The left arm may roll out to the left, the chin can follow. Lengthening left hip down away from left armpit. The chin may roll back to center or even to the right. The knees may bend if they're not moving back through to center, touch the feet down. Lift the hips, move them a little to the right, sweep the knees in. Knees falling left, you can absolutely keep that left hand on the left thigh or the right thigh, the top thigh. You might reach down and grab the toes. You might use the strap around the feet. So practitioner's choice, which works best for you. So if you're using a strap, you can come around the feet, reaching the legs out, holding the strap in that left hand, and the right arm may roll out to the right. The gaze could follow. We may be lengthening right hip down, away from right shoulder, right arm kick. You can always just keep bending knees. Taking your time to unwind the twists. Returning to center, touch the feet down, level the hips. Maybe we're sliding some cushions under the knees for a little leg elevation. Maybe we're reaching the legs long across the ground. We might rock the legs. Palms could rest on the body. Backs of the hands, maybe it's more restful to keep them on the ground. Let the head rest at center. Invite the eyes to rest softly closed.
continuing to rest here as long as you like. As the breath deepens, we may be returning movement to toes, to fingers, circling wrists, reaching arms overhead, maybe arching the back, perhaps glide the hips, and exhale, releasing. We may slide each foot in, rolling to rest on one side, At your own pace, returning to a seat. Maybe bringing that second favorite leg on top. Sliding a hand to the belly, a hand to the heart. Sealing our practice with sound. Deep inhale. Ah. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for sharing this practice. Let me know if you have any questions.